So today I'm going to talk with Tony Randazzo of Gen X Perspective about gear, his coming up in the podcasting world, and his eventual evolution into vodcasting. So let's get into it. Podcasting is the inevitable evolution of podcasting, and I'm here to give you some tips and tricks to help you make that leap from behind the microphone to the front of the camera. This is From Podcast to Vodcast. Tony, thank you very much for joining me today. Hey, what's going on, brother? How are you? Good, good. Uh, how you been? <laughs> Just working like a dog. My day job <laughs> keeps me pretty busy these days. It's springtime, right. of course, and working in a vineyard in a winery in the spring means um, growing things. So things oh. are waking up and growing, and it all happens at once, and you hear the birds chirping and, and the birds chirp and they really don't <laughs> care about a pandemic. They didn't last right. year either. And it's like, they're just on a schedule all their own and you better be ready and you know, hold on for dear life. Cause of course, finally in New York state spring kind of happened all at once and uh, right, so yeah. jamming like crazy, which mm -hmm. um, doesn't allow a whole lot of time for sitting here with headphones on playing with stuff and having this <laughs> stuff been fun. But I, you know, I get to hang out with people like you when I can do it. And that's awesome and fun. So, hey, that's I'm great, man. Be here. This is great. Well, thank you for taking the time out today. Uh, I know your show is going through a bit of a transition right now uh, because uh, you have piqued some interest into moving into vodcasting and live streaming. So, uh, you know, I, I want to touch a little bit on that this episode uh, to yeah. what made you decide to make that transition. But first, let's talk a little bit about your podcast. Uh, cool. so tell me what it's about. Well, it's, um, so, so the, the short version of the story is, so I'm a business owner, family business, small town, upstate New York, and I've been doing this for 10, 12 years. And anybody that has lived in a small town or has been around a small town understands that, um, anything that you say that comes out of your mouth anywhere at any given time outside of your home and even in your home in some cases you got to be careful in a small town because they can hear you through the walls um people <laughs> you know people know everybody's business for good and bad so right. i feel like as a business owner i've spent the last 10 years kind of filtering kind of my personal thoughts because we're in a retail business you know our job isn't to give opinions our job is to have a good time with the customers customer service having fun you know keep your opinions to yourself no matter what the customer is saying and you know unless they're being combative or horrible <laughs> you know just short of that you smile and have a good time with them and nod and say yeah totally or whatever and, so the uh, customer's so started, not always right <laughs> well they are well, they are when they're in the room. Well, they are when they're there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, when you go in the back room, it's a different story. But again, small town, you got to be careful. So yeah. I kind of had this, it was just kind of this nagging, you know, working all the time. You own your own business, not being able to hang out. Um, kind of my core group, my lifelong core group of friends are out west where I spent the majority of kind of my 20s and 30s. And so I didn't really have anywhere to vent and my wife can only tolerate so much of it. So it was like, you know what? I, you know, I'm always have been pretty opinionated is kind of how it started. So opinionated and, and I'm a Gen Xer and opinionated turned into, I think that podcast name was probably taken and, and it turned in, well, my perspective, uh, perspective, Gen X perspective. Okay. I got it. I'm a Gen Xer and this is about my perspective. So there was kind of a, just a, a place that I could go and kind of get my opinions out there in an environment where I thought that that felt like maybe nobody was listening. So you're behind this microphone and whatever room you're in, mm. I've been doing them by myself, not interviewing people initially. And um, so it kind of felt like my personal private little thing, which now has, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people that listen to it, which is a totally different, weird kind of feeling to know that people are actually listening to what I'm saying. But it started mm -hmm. out as just kind of a place to kind of vent and rant about things that I was passionate about, good, bad, and the ugly, you know, I, you know, and kind of my opening talks about that, you know, it's everything from, you know, politics to sports to comic books to, you know, my, my generation in general. And if I had, um, I could move my camera around a little better in this room, it's full of kind of my generational stuff from boom boxes to, 
you know, Star Wars figures, you name it. It's kind of, awesome. you know, how I grew up, you know, my nostalgia from being a kid. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it really just started as kind of a place to vent and, um, and just kind of get my opinions out there in a safe way that wasn't uh, affecting maybe the family business is kind of how I initially thought about it. But, um, and then that's kind of morphed. It turned into, well, now that I'm learning how to do this, we can do it for the business. So maybe we'll do a podcast for the winery and vineyard. We started talking about doing that. So it's kind of, it's, uh, it's really turned into and grown into a, uh, an educational experience for me, um, that I can take to the business. Cause we want to really kind of take the, we do pretty well in social media, but really want to take uh, podcasting and vodcasting, um, to our business now and be able to get out to our customers in a different way that over the last year, of course, with the pandemic, they're so much more accustomed to being a part of, especially video. Again, yeah. we all used to hide behind our phones and our conference right. calls and our podcasts. And now we were kind of thrust into, you know, the, uh, the whole video conferencing world and, um, Oh, what it would have been like to own a um, a small fledgling company before the pandemic that did video conferencing? Wouldn't that have been nice? And then have everybody yeah. on the planet use it all of a sudden? That'd be kind of sure. cool. It didn't happen yeah. to me, but God bless <laughs> the folks that it did. So yeah, so that's the short version of how I got into podcasting. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So you're what eighteen episodes in, something like that? Yeah, eighteen, eighteen, yeah, eighteen, seventeen or eighteen, and um. And in, and I didn't necessarily initially think much about the video. It, it was kind of always in the back of my mind. Um, but until um, Trish from Gen X Voice invited me on to um, uh, to her podcast, and um, and that was an audio only, and we hung out and talked, and uh, she invited me to uh, do this. Um, uh, conference over the summertime uh, podcasters convention and that was done through uh, Streamyard, so video so uh, trish and i i called her and said hey can we do just a walk through with the stream yard thing just so i can kind of see how it works before um you know have to get in front of a bunch of people that i don't know or get in front of anybody for that matter on camera right. and she said sure and that turned into a three-hour epic two-part wow vodcast slash podcast um that i ended up doing i hit the record button and off we went and we talked and we talked and we laughed and we drank That's and cool. we had a great time and i immediately really fell in love with the idea of vodcasting so mm -hmm. thank you trish from gen x voice she was kind of the catalyst to make this happen coincidentally that's kind of where that's where we met because i saw you at yeah. the same convention doing a different show and then i reached out to you and kind of here we are today um where you've kind of been instrumental in helping me kind of start moving towards officially doing more live streaming and video podcasting which i'm st dipping my toe in the water and starting to do it in I know just short of you driving six hours and hitting me on the back of the head and saying, just hit the record button and do it. Um, I'm ready just about do it. Now. Just do it, Tony. Just I'm do right it. About there now, so. Jump right in. So, yeah. So that's how, um, that's how kind of the transition started was, um, um, going on that really cool, um, podcast convention really. And, and it was really crazy. The nerves and like the butterflies in the stomach, that yeah. I had sitting in front of a camera. And now, mind you, I was on vacation. I took all of this gear in this room and right. put it in totes and drove it to Florida with me on vacation. <laughs> My wife was like, hey, you know, you have more um, you have more stuff than me. You know, she, and she reminded me of that up there and back, by the way, as I filled up the back of the pickup truck. And um, and yeah, so I'm sitting in this guest bedroom in this little house in Florida that we rented. And had all my stuff set up and I'm getting ready to hit record and go live. And I was, I mean, I was nervous. I was nervous, nervous, like going on stage in front of people when you're a kid in high school, kind of nervous and yeah. had butterflies and, and it was with Trish and it, that was kind of on purpose. I asked her to kind of co-host with me and um, kind of hold my hand basically. Right. And um, because I had a level of comfort with her and knew what that our chemistry was good. We'd be able to talk and figure out something to talk about. And, 
Yeah. And we did, and it went really well. And about it was about five minutes into, and I think that was a 30 or 45 minute session. Mm-hmm. I kind of calmed down. I mean, granted, we had had a couple cocktails too, but kind of calmed down and got into a groove. And I had this big timer up in front of me um, that I set on my cell phone because we had only a certain amount of time and we had to kind of wrap it up. And I mean, it was, it started and it was like finger snapped. We were done. And we had a great time and had a lot of fun. Uh, we didn't get any complaints and I got no hate mail. So I, apparently I did okay. And, <laughs> See, uh, that's and why of, I keep telling you to, to just do it. Just fun. get in yeah. front of the camera. Just, you know, just pull the Band-Aid. Indeed. You know? So, and, yeah. yeah. And last summer I was inadvertently doing it with the business every Sunday morning. We have this um, flea market that we do. And, uh, you know, I turn on my phone and I'd go to the Facebook page for the business and I'd hit record actually i wasn't doing live streaming at first i was doing a short video and then i was posting it to facebook and i think Mm -hmm. maybe the last two weekends in a row i would just live stream it because whatever was going to happen was going to happen and nothing ever happened necessarily but yeah it was fun and had a good time kind of doing that and um i think all those little experiences over the last you know year and a half two years kind of brought me to where i'm at today which is kind of taking this as a business kind of taking it seriously having fun with it um, I'm not able to dedicate this time of year um, as much time that I would like because of our business, but that's okay. I mean, I can, if I can get a couple episodes in a month and keep it moving and then really um, concentrate when I have more time, when the time allows, I'm going to do that. But yeah, I'm having a great time. It's really fascinating. And, you know, who doesn't like to spend money on stuff? And there's so much stuff you can buy <laughs> so in the podcast, toys, yeah. podcast world. Like, seriously, there's, yeah. Um, yeah, toys. I could start showing you stupid toys. And I'm not talking Star Wars toys. I'm talking podcast toys. No, podcasting you know, toys. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, which, yeah. Which this and which that and which right. you got to have one of these. And well, you got to have four of those. And yeah. So <laughs> definitely gear is, um, is an addiction um and, okay so let's talk about yeah. that a little bit because yeah. uh when you first started podcasting did you have yeah. any prior uh audio knowledge like how to edit audio or how to um let's say you know normalize a track so on the software end n- no not much um okay kind of where my experience lied is uh lies was my dad um uh, played a lot of bluegrass um, even I'm going to say semi-professionally, he had a lot of professional friends in the industry, in the music industry that he would be in their circles and, um, and hooking up PAs, um, for our events at the winery. Um, right. so, you know, how to, how to run a PA system. And I, I mean, I had a general awareness of chords and a basic board, I mean, you know, a, how to plug a guitar in. I mean, you know, I knew kind of as far as how, editing, you had no idea editing not so much no not really it was more um youtube kind of here we go um and then right. picking you know I, I i run on a mac so GarageBand is right there and that was a great starting point although i found that i use um more adobe software um at least for the editing but with that all being said when i started podcasting where I spent the money initially, you know, because you can start a podcast using your cell phone and a USB mic or no USB mic and just your earbuds. I mean, it can be that basic and people do it all, all the time. I was fortunate enough to, um, get a, um, a roadcaster board, um, roadcaster pro when I started and that, uh, I didn't have to necessarily take my audio and do anything with it other than upload it to, um, um, uh, to Buzzsprout to my, uh, to my host site. And right. I paid a little bit of extra for them to kind of clean it up and normalize the audio. Although the roadcaster did most of the heavy lifting there. And I did, um, until I started interviewing, until I did my three interviews with Trish, I hadn't spent much time having to do any sort of uh, audio editing really at all. Um, yeah. Because uh, I I want to say that I was pretty good about not rambling, or at least I was okay with the rambling that I was doing. So those were part of kind of the 
organic podcasts that I were put I was putting out or have been putting out, and it hasn't been a lot of them, but really the Roadcaster Pro is what simplified my life and kind of took the hurdle out of having to feel like I had to learn how to do audio editing. Although the more I've gotten into it now, especially with the video, you got to be paying attention to that audio more. There's a lot of really cool software. I mean, Audacity, um, I mean, just the Adobe platform alone that is cross-platform, obviously, for Mac and yeah. PC. They have some really cool stuff that it isn't as... Um, Adobe Audition is good. Adobe uh, Audition, thank you. Um, yeah. I don't have them up on my screen in front of me, but, you know, there's like there's like three of them that you can use um, all, below kind of their, yeah. all below kind of their master audio and video uh, editing, and it works, and it's pretty easy, and, you know, you can take a 15-minute kind of youtube tutorial on at least some of the basic stuff and get sure. yourself going pretty easy so i found that not very intimidating from that perspective um from my gen x perspective it wasn't very intimidating at all and um it was uh it was kind of fun what i found was doing interviews um <laughs> you start to get a lot of the ums in the back and forth when you're talking and you know and it just lends itself to having to do some more kind of tweaking in your audio Sure. And maybe taking out, you know, the longer pauses or if you both talk over each other wicked at one moment or something weird happens and you got to kind of go clean it up. But yeah, yeah, it's been kind of a neat experience with that, too. And uh, I found that, yeah, both platforms for me and I live in the Mac and PC world, both. Um, yeah. Adobe was they got they kind of got their stuff there. It's kind of cool. Well, I, I have listened to a bunch of your episodes. I'm an avid listener of your show. <laughs> And, you. uh, you know, so, and I do notice that you have sounded pretty awesome since the beginning, you know, so, um, <laughs> your, your sound is pretty much on point. Yeah. A good microphone is huge, of course. Yeah. And, and we've all heard, you know, audio is king and in the podcast world, that's all you get is audio. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. If you mess up the audio, you're kind of dead in the water. Right. So in the research that I did and what led me to the Roadcaster Pro and originally um, uh, the Roadcaster, it wasn't the pod mic, it's the bigger one that I started with. Mm -hmm. I started with, I'm not even at 20 episodes and I'm talking about starting with something different. <laughs> um, uh, I have the SM7B now. Um, I bought That's that. That's the excitement they, in buying all the toys that we were talking yeah, about. <laughs> you just can't sit still. So, so yeah. Now I needed another microphone because I had to have an extra one in case I did an interview and I, you know, sure. Yeah, yeah. And I needed yeah. a backup personally for me that nobody's spitting in that I need to keep that one aside and <laughs> right. whatever. It's, it's an addiction, total yep. addiction. So, um, and then I have you know it, when I can't take my road. Caster Pro, which I can take because I have portable power for it and all the extra little Gucci plugs that uh, you can buy for it to take it portable. I have uh, another mini board that plugs into my laptop that's like six inches by six inches, actually. This little thing. Awesome. I'm going to knock something off to kind of see if things go flying. Look at it. So I bought the Zoom uh, PodTrack P4. So this is that's good. I was gonna, I originally I was going to take this to Florida with me instead of all this other stuff, but I hadn't used it and I wasn't going to just take something that I hadn't used and then just rely on it. So that's a good point. Yeah. So, so yeah, I ended up with, I have that cool thing, which I'll probably take to work with me, maybe use it at work, which I'm totally lying. So I'm going to end up putting this thing around cause I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I have it in case I, in case I'm in a situation or it's more realistic to, um, be more kind of run and gunning if I'm doing something maybe in the village or I'm doing something out at the winery outside where it, it really isn't practical to have something big. I just kind of have the luxury of, um, being able to, uh, make that happen, I guess. And, uh, it's been fun to buy the stuff. Yeah. So lights, I got lights up around me now and mm -hmm. you can kind of see, um, off the corner of i'm gonna get my hands messed up that way um you can see the edge of the green screen that's leaning up there yep. i was playing with that last night with another program trying to figure out how that thing works and that just means i need more lights in here shooting on the thing to make it look good and you know yeah it's a constant kind of play with stuff and it's really been a lot of fun circling back to the very beginning i've done a lot of recordings um when i was tr before i ever did my first episode 
um, you know, some of the best photos and audio and video that we've done for our business, we do on our iPhones because it's, right. it's just convenient. I mean, people, some and the of the cameras high, are really good. Yo, yeah, they're awesome. And you know, yeah. I bought, uh, we built a, um, a little, uh, and this doesn't have anything to do with podcasting, but it has to do with these phones is built a, a white box basically and put some lights in it. And that's where we shoot all of our bottle art instead of sending our wine bottles off to be professionally photographed right. or having somebody come in with these light boxes. I have two mm -hmm. different sizes and, and the staff use them all the time to take pictures and you would swear that they were professionally done and they're done on an iPhone with just really good lighting. Awesome. And, and you know what I'm learning about the video stuff Two things depth of field and lights that's probably yeah. the most important and being keeping track of what's going on behind you or at least kind of your set or your look which um this is my home office this is really kind of the gen x space um we're working on something different for the winery of course but um okay. you know yeah we're playing with it we're having some fun but there's yeah a lot more you got to kind of pay attention to sure you know, the dog walking yeah. in or you know the fan running above your head or lights doing weird stuff or yeah. And I mean, light, is, lighting is very important when you're dealing with video, you know, video because, sure. yeah. you know, it, it just, I, I have successfully managed to make a webcam look like a DSLR just by improving my lighting, <laughs> Your lighting. you know, so yeah. it's, yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. But, uh, so you say that now you don't have a regular schedule on going live just yet, uh, Correct. social media, um, do you plan on going live on a schedule or like just randomly at first, just to put your toes in the water? I think um, how I would like to do it um, is ideally, um, I, I really am going to probably be transitioning more to interview style. Mm. Um, and, and, and I have uh, at my disposal, especially in my personal and professional uh, environment, even though I'm in this small town, there's a ton of talent and people that I would love to interview locally and talk to that have just all sorts of really cool backgrounds. Mm -hmm. So when the, as the pandemic is lightening up and more people are getting um, their shots, so to speak, in, in getting to the point where they're being more closed quarters, um, I'll start doing more interviews. I plan on all of those being recorded um, in video. And the goal would be that they would drop when the podcast drops, essentially, or within a day of each other. But essentially, if I'm doing a podcast that's coming out, there's going to be um, a video companion that would go with it or supersede it kind of depending because there's, again, different editing and different things you got to sure. consider. So, But the idea would be it would go hand in hand um, yeah. that, you know, or, it, you know, and it would likely be uh, considering myself more of a, a vodcaster who has a podcast as well. So I would like it to get to that point and, um, and that, and that the video is, is really the, um, the forefront and what's kind of driving it and pushing it. Mm -hmm. And the podcast is there and that's where I started and I really enjoy that. And it, and there's a lot of value in that. And there is a ton of times when yeah. maybe it's not realistic to be in front of the camera or to, or for that secondary person. Although the technology, just like we're doing today, you mm -hmm. can bring people in and talk to them when they're not with you. Although, as you know, it, how different it is and how organic and how, yeah, it's a different, different chemistry when yeah. there's two people sitting together. And if you know them on top of it, it's even better. But True. what I kind of figured is I would hone my inter interviewing skills with the people that I know and that I'm comfortable with before I start trying to reach out to people that I don't necessarily know at all or don't really yeah. have kind of a, a baseline with um, right. so that I don't, you know, so that it just everything runs smoother. So then I'm even more comfortable with my gear more comfortable with X, Y, and Z and can move forward with it. But you know, yeah. yeah, you start interviewing your husband, your wife, your friends, you know, it's kind of that, that's where you got, you got to start somewhere. That's right. And, uh, Absolutely. and you start talking to people you're comfortable with. And you know, for me, just my first do do interview, well, yeah, totally just do it. <laughs> it was, with, was with Trish and she's a Gen Xer and we were, we were both talking about the same stuff on our two podcasts sure. and kind uh -huh. of along the same trajectory um, 
although she's taken off like a rocket ship this feels like it's her only job that woman is everywhere these days if you yes, go listen noticed, if anybody's not listening to gen x voice go uh you, go holy listen smokes. to it and subscribe yeah that girl is on fire she is all <laughs> over the place right now it's like crazy like she is marketing 101 man she is she's doing a great job god bless yes. her and um but it, we had something in common and I had listened to one of her audio pieces and it was like, she's really a cool chick. She'd be somebody that I would have. And again, Gen Xers will get this one. It's not somebody that I totally would have met at Denny's and hung out with at two o'clock in the morning, drinking coffee back in the day. <laughs> and, and it felt, um, it, uh, she Denny's is horrible. Me of, it, she <laughs> my, hey, knock it off. <laughs> it wasn't always that way. Um, <laughs> she, so yeah, so that was a level of, it perceived comfort and it just kind of flew i mean and we had a lot of fun so she was uh she was great she's a great person for helping me with that and uh kind of getting me she kind of brought me into the podcast family i guess mm -hmm. and, and gave me a connection to other podcasters which now has grown and um it's been a great kind of neat uh, thing so anybody that's listening to this that's considering doing this that hasn't yet it's a really cool community. Um, yes. that's totally, it's totally unexpected. You don't get into it expecting to meet people or make friends or get contact. I mean, you kind of think, okay, yeah, that, yeah I'm going to bump into people and I'm going to be talking to people in chat rooms, maybe a little bit if I have a question, but it, it's the unexpected that is the cool part. So it's, you know, this kind of, I got a, I got a direct message from somebody today. Um, that I had met during the conference, somebody else as well. And they were, you know, reaching out to me and saying, Hey, and it was just, it's total, it's those unexpected moments that make kind of it really worth it. And sure. during this whole weird pandemic craziness thing, uh, it made it even more kind of unexpected because that's the last thing you were thinking that you were going to be meeting new people in any way, shape or form or communicating mm -hmm. with people that other than the people you had to. So <laughs> Yeah, it's been cool. It's been an awesome ride so far. Yeah, and it because hasn't been a year really. Yeah, so I, I know because it's like when I first started podcasting, you know, I started and you know, I met a group of guys who had their own shows and you know, we just got together, we formed our own little community, you know, and and yeah. we're still friends today. So you know, the podcasters can be a great community. You meet the right people. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they really have been. And um and, you know, that's where I can always, you know, do the name dropping about the podcast collective, which right. was the uh, conference that we uh, but were both a part of this summer. And um, mm -hmm. a great group of people there, um, always super supportive. And they were a lot of fun. And as much as they were busy running this show for two weekends in a row, they, you know, handheld me enough to get me on the air and make it happen. And I had a great time and it was really yeah, cool. Yeah, but that guy, that guy, Tom, I, I don't know about him. You know, yeah, yeah, well, he's a Canadian <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, and Canada does border New York where we're both in New York and you're, right. you're in at New York city. Well, or in the Bronx and, or in Brooklyn and I'm in upstate, which is still New York. And if you're not from New York state, it's all the same. We live next door to each other essentially because there's nothing other than New York city, of course. Okay. But yeah, that, those Canadians, that Tom guy is, um, he makes me yeah, nervous. Yeah kind of yeah. weird a little shady right. yeah yeah but, uh, <laughs> all right so let's uh let's talk a little bit about how uh what what's your approach um from doing your normal podcast the gen x perspective mm -hmm. to maybe doing a podcast for your business like is there a difference on how you would approach doing that yes um so uh, uh gen x perspective uh just by the nature of its name um the perspective piece is, is it's, it's really a kind of a, a personal piece based on me and it can range from any topic. So, uh, star Wars, Ren and Stimpy, just cause I'm seeing them in front of me. Um, you know, you name it, it's crazy. Uh, you know, mountain bikes, hiking, uh, personal history, whatever, whatever's under the sun, whoever you're talking to and whatever their interest is, yeah, whatever it's going to be. So, you know, some of my podcasts have been, growing up and getting caught every time I crashed my dad's car, even like the most minorest of ding turned into like this epic story of getting busted by my <laughs> father. And it happened through my entire high school years. And uh -huh. that's just one example of just random crazy story. Um, I worked in, in basically the backpacking industry and hiking industry. I was a few pounds lighter, of course, but, um, 
I, I worked in that industry forever, but my start in that industry was like a, as a five, six year old kid crapping my pants on some trail in upstate New York with my parents when I was too young to, to like it and, uh, old enough to absolutely hate it. So how I started in that industry there like that, I mean, just random craziness now with the business, it's more single minded. So it's the wine industry. And I'm going to say industry because there's the um, vineyard piece and the farming piece. And then there's the wine kind of, there's three phases to it. There's the business end of the winery. There's the customer end of the winery. And then there's the farming end. So there's kind of three tiers to that. And um, I mean, and there could be a lot more. So staff could be another one, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, kind of, we're looking at the winery as, as more or the business as, uh, kind of more, uh, it's it's going to be obviously the about theme yeah. will be about wine in the wine industry. So if I'm doing an interview with somebody, it might be the president of the Wine and Grape Foundation um, in New York State or um, a vendor that sells corks or, you know, uh, winemaking equipment people, winemakers, uh, as an example, um, interviewing other p- industry professionals about their specific um, skill set in the industry. So that'll be really a lot more informative uh, for other other winery professionals, but more importantly for the consumer, the idea is kind of to peel back, you know, peel back the the tape off the window so you can kind of peer in the back room. So to, you know, kind of example, so you can really see what's going on in, in our industry. Um, we've always set our business up that way. So customers come to see us, um, the restrooms for our tasting room. So for our, com- or for our consumer area where our customers come in and taste wine, if they need to use the restroom, they actually have to walk into our production facility. They go through double doors that are made out of glass and they get to walk in. We might be bottling that day. My winemaker, Dave, might be in there making wine that day, and it's t- a totally submersive, interactive experience. That's pretty awesome. For the last 12, 12 months where we had to put stupid barricades up because of COVID. But people could come in there and be kind of a part of it. They could get yeah. to see it. And if we're doing a tour, then and I'm doing a tour with customers. I'm explaining what he's doing sometimes totally annoying him because he's trying to get his job done and I'm getting in the way with a bunch of customers, which is a lot of fun, but you know, what's he going to do? <laughs> he can complain, I guess. But <laughs> so it's that kind of interactive experience that I want to take kind of to the next level. So, uh, you know, right now is vineyard time. Vineyard's waking up. We're getting out there. We're pruning. We're cleaning up the, you know, just cleaning everything and getting things going. And so I've been, you know, have my trusty iPhone with me or my GoPro and I've been shooting a lot of B-roll just trying to get things so that, um, so that I can put some episodes together, even if the first one or two or every fifth episode or whatever it is might just be, you know, different B-roll kind of put together and talking, uh, you know, kind of an audio explanation and a talk through it about a topic. So again, a really a voiceover thank you a very different um editing and production kind of process than a vodcast or podcast and it's we'll call it its traditional form or its current form right now where it's more of kind of a a commercial uh, literally like a television commercial kind of thing or more of a documentary kind of feel it'll have all those different elements um kind of thrown into it so it'll have a lot more going on so when you start talking about software and editing i've you know i'm getting my practice in now on my personal podcast um and learning how to do that stuff so i can take it to the business because for the business we're really going to kind of take it to the next level with a lot more in the way of graphics and you know, you start throwing live streaming in there and yada, yada, yada. And it's going to get kind of crazy, <laughs> but really the big difference is single minded. So wine industry versus life industry. Sure. Kind yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Tony, I end every episode with my guest uh, giving one piece of advice to the audience. So what would be one thing that you could say to the audience? A piece of advice. Yep. About podcasting or anything about in podcasting, the world? Yes, I'm sorry. About podcasting. Oh, so 
<laughs> about so, raising children. No. <laughs> about raising kids. So let me tell you a story. <laughs> no, about um, podcasting. Yeah. So the one piece of advice I would give anybody, um, and actually I've given this piece of advice very recently. I had somebody kind of reach out to me and say, hey, I want to start a podcast. I said, well, come over and I can talk to you about it and show you all the mistakes that I made. And they kind of looked at me funny at first. I'm like, look, you know, you, if you have a, a credit card, you're going to get yourself into trouble. So really my piece of advice is do your research. Um, talk to as many people you can, uh, especially about hardware. Software is kind of easy. Um, yeah. You know, you can pay the money and some software is very expensive, but you can get on StreamYard and decide that you find something better than StreamYard and you're not out a thousand dollars or more in some cases or, you know, for the Roadcaster Pro Board, you know, right now, is it is it sure that came out, which who just came out with kind of the competitor? It was sure, wasn't it, that they just came out with their um, so, yeah. oh, Zoom? It was the Zoom. The oh, Zoom, yeah. yeah. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom just yeah. came out with a board. It almost looks identical to the Roadcaster. So you got to kind of do some research. And, you know, YouTube, of course, is the best great place to do that. But I'll tell you this. I got on YouTube and I started doing some research on, um, I don't remember what it was, but I, maybe it was cameras. And all of this stuff about Panasonic GH5s, and 5s's started coming up and i watched a video about it and then i started doing more research and they kept coming up and kept coming up and kept coming up and then i realized that the algorithm realized that i was looking at videos about gh5s and it was omitting all the other stuff about sony yep. and some of the other companies out there that have maybe even better equipment for better pricing you know, so it's about, you know, do your homework, but be very cognizant about these things that they, um, they become, um, single minded in their, um, pursuit of giving you what they think you want. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, talk to people, reach out, send an email, do your homework and um, make sure that you, um, and then don't rush into anything. So I'm giving way more advice than one thing, but uh, <laughs> you know, take a deep breath is probably you know, to shorten the whole thing up is take a deep breath, wait a day before you hit that buy button. Um, exactly. do that as I'm going to tell you that I'm the worst at it. I, and John, I told you, cause we were talking about this a couple days ago and yeah. I, I, at the time when you told me, Oh, well, you know, maybe it's something that you don't want to get right away. Maybe you don't need it. And I had already ordered it. The <laughs> deck. And nice. I just showed up for like two days ago. I'm like, it's still in the box. And, um, and actually the Ecamm live that we had talked about, they are, they're heavy into stream deck. So I'm going to have an opportunity sure. to use it. But that was one of those things where I had actually, I, and you're a big fan of them, I know, but uh, you know, it's talking to people and that's where kind of these um, chat rooms, and these groups about podcasting um, can be really helpful. Um, because you can find some good people in there and you can really tell the stupid messages that people put up where they say, you know, 30 second answer quick, you know, the best microphone. They're not really right. looking to find out what microphone's good, but you can get in there and really follow some cool threads and find some yeah. good people to ask. Just the talk right to all the podcasters, you know? Yeah. And, um, and on a professional level, um, I found that, uh, Sweetwater, um, mm -hmm. which is kind of a big online mute they're more music based but they do a lot of podcast stuff as well they are they know their equipment more than they're a great resource oh, yeah. and yeah, they're, yeah. if you call them and ask them questions they know every little thing they know everything yeah everything <laughs> and the other and you one, know what i love about Sweetwater is that it comes with a bag of candy it comes with a bag of candy <laughs> and you get your own sales rep that um and you know they're regional yeah. whatever they're doing but they act like they know you really well and it's a great company and, yeah. yeah, and they're a really good company, um, but they're great for research. So even if you haven't bought anything from them and you call and read out, they have, they they're they're spot on with their their um their kind of the reviews and what's good and the kind of ins and outs, and they can answer a ton of questions. Um, and then yes. for for big companies, they they're pretty impressive yeah. for what they do. And they have been out of a ton of stuff since the pandemic started, but that's that whole supply chain shortage thing. And the guy, they're all going crazy over there. I know they are, but um, yeah. So yeah, do your homework. I guess that's going to be my one piece of advice and just do it, man. Hit record, talk, do it, have fun. <laughs> 
All right, everybody. Uh, Tony Randazzo runs a podcast called Gen X Perspective. You can head on over to genxperspective.com to listen to all of his episodes and uh, just learn more about his show. Um, I also, speaking of all the tech that he and I have been talking about, the cameras and the stream decks and everything like that, uh, you can head on over to vodsquad.live and, uh, and pick yourself up some custom icons for that stream deck. Uh, I have over 280 custom icons specifically for podcasting and vodcasting. So uh, you guys, yeah, 280. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, head on over to vodsquad.live and uh, be part of the squad. All right, everybody. Uh, Tony, thank you very much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Indeed, brother. It was my pleasure and happy to be here. All right, everybody. I'll see you next time.